The irradiated xenomorph, who first appeared in the comic Aliens Aftermath, was identical to a regular xenomorph, but far more deadly. Due to its long stay on a moon that experienced a severe nuclear winter, the xenomorph drone went through several genetic mutations that elevated its ferocity. Xenomorphs are already the world's most ruthless hunters, but the mutations caused this particular specimen to become a real minion of death. So, without wasting any time, let's explore this bioluminescent, biomechanical monstrosity. Origins in Aftermath Almost 37 years after the events of the second Alien film, members of Renegade XM found themselves on Hadley's Hope, the colony on Acheron where the exciting events involving Ripley, Newt, and the Alien Queen transpired. So, the story of Alien's Aftermath begins in the year 2214. Before I go forward, let me quickly introduce you to who and what Renegade XM exactly is. So, it started its journey as an investigative journalism organization that vehemently opposed Wayland yutani and all their shenanigans on various celestial bodies, screwing them over to extract the precious minerals and ores. Eventually, Renegade XM turned to extremism and started blowing up vessels, which is how the comic begins. The three Renegade XM members I was talking about are Cutter Vasquez, Leela Rosewood, and Woody Ballesteros, who, along with their pilot, arrived on a Wayland yutani fueling station that served as a hub for three systems. Freighters that traveled through here carried mountains of ore in them. Our man, Cutter Vasquez, Vasquez was about to blow up the station. Of course, the whole event was being recorded so that it could be broadcast. You see, Cutter was the nephew of the fiery Jeanette Vasquez from Aliens, and much like her, he used to live his life on the edge. So, after setting up the explosives, he only gave himself and his friends 60 seconds to evacuate the fueling vessel. Leela Rosewood and Woody Ballesteros were not pleased by this stunt, and they had no option but to make a run for it. No one would really be happy about being crispy crittered by two megatons of explosives. Although they managed to save their asses, one of the rear boosters got damaged, and a few circuits went down. Nevertheless, Leela went on to review the data from the drive that they had retrieved from the station. She asked her computer to scan for records on Hadley's Hope or any derivatives thereof. In the next few panels, Cutter explains why he hates Wayland yutani but that's a story for another day. Anyways, it wasn't long before the team reached LV-426, but the LV-426 we see in the comic was far, far different than what we saw in the film. While both versions were pretty desolate, the one here seemed like a cold desert. The team was in for some rude surprises, which was only elevated by the fact that LV-426 had been swabbed off every star map, as if the place just didn't exist. Of course, Wayland yutani wanted to bury whatever happened on this infamous moon all those years ago. Nevertheless, the pilot sent out probes for recon. The temperature was a chilly minus 20 Celsius, with some serious radiation levels. It was clear that LV-426 was experiencing a nuclear winter. They triangulated the data readings to pinpoint the likely source of the outpost and successfully found out exactly where the colony was present. But why did the team arrive on LV-426? Well, for two reasons. One, they needed a place to lay low and avoid being caught by Wayland yutani after what they had recently done, and two, Cutter Vasquez was sure he would find more info about what may have happened to Jeanette, his aunt. You see, Leela Rosewood had told Woody about a deleted file from the fueling station log, and he immediately told Cutter about it. Desperate for answers and a few ulterior motives here and there, Cutter convinced the team that they should fly to Acheron to find answers. After touchdown, they gradually made their way through the atmosphere processor and into the main colony. They quickly figured that the atmosphere processor must have blown up, causing the nuclear winter. Cutter Vasquez, Leela Rosewood, and Woody Ballesteros visited the base while Drake, the pilot, stayed behind to fix the damage that the ship had suffered. As Drake prepared to do her thing, she heard something moving around on the ship, and before long, we see an illuminated and irradiated xenomorph drone tail puncturing her back and chest. It's safe to say that the pilot was dead. Super, super dead. With the fate of their friend unbeknownst to them, the others explored the colony and found several dead remains of humans as well as xenomorphs. The sight clearly gave them chills, but they kept on their mission until Leela tried to resurrect the mainframe. The model was a bit old, but not too old for her geeky brain. Upon the successful reactivation of the mainframe, a hologram of a woman appeared, which was the ship's AI, Mother. Leela asked Mother to review the security log, beginning its shutdown and scrolling backward. What's a good xenomorph story without a few screw-ups, right? Ballesteros steps into a patch of rotting floor and falls right through it, damaging his leg. Leela asks the right question. These were modular units, so what was with the sublevels? And it seems the Cutter had the answer, which was strange. He tells her that they had stacked and buried a few sublevels to keep the sensitive stuff below ground 
around. It almost seemed like he expected to find what they had just found. Before trying to find a way to get Ballesteros back, he asked Leela to run a search query on Carter Burke, the blue collar from Wayland yutani who appeared in Aliens. The hologram woman also reveals the presence of Subject Zero, the colonist on Hadley's Hope who was the first to be infected by a facehugger. Wayland yutani puts Subject Zero in cryosleep to ensure that the infection was contained as well as preserved. Typical way you. Learning about this, Cutter went on leaving Leela by himself, who got the shock of her life upon discovering the irradiated xenomorph that previously killed Drake. This guy was a drone like any other, but he was glowing. To be honest, it was a sight to behold, a thing of beauty created by nature, which did not spit and bleed acidic blood, but liquid nitrogen. Leela shot at it multiple times, but the icy Xeno's blood spilled on her hand, which immediately froze before becoming brittle and breaking down. She couldn't bear the pain and fell to the ground, only to be taken down by the Xenomorph as the hologram woman looked at the horrific scene from a distance. Meanwhile, Cutter comes down to save his friend, but not really. He was actually there to retrieve Subject Zero. Why? Well, the Extrasolar Colonization Administration had reached out to him personally and asked him to get Subject Zero for them, and Cutter had secretly agreed. Of course, this was an exchange for money, not like Cutter was doing it for his cause. As he climbed out of the hole with Subject Zero, the hologram woman came to him. You see, she was actually Yutani, of Wayland Yutani. She had been observing him and his friends from the moment they entered Hadley's Hope. Yutani tells Cutter that if he gave them Subject Zero, all his criminal records would be wiped clean. And, on top of that, she would pay him double what the Extra Solar Colonization Administration was paying him. Cutter was reluctant, but agreed. Unfortunately for him, the irradiated Xenomorph finds Cutter and attacks him, and Cutter, in a desperate move, shoots point-blank at the Xenomorph. In the end, the only survivor of the ordeal was Woody, but the last panel of the comic shows that a chestburster erupted from Subject Zero, leaving Woody's fate looking rather grim. Irradiated Xenomorph Drone versus Regular Xenomorph Drone It's safe to assume that the Irradiated Xenomorph Drone was the last of the surviving Xenomorphs on Hadley's Hope, the nuclear explosion that followed in the wake of the atmospheric processor's destruction in Aliens killed all others but left this one specimen alive, albeit mutating it severely. This one Xenomorph had a bioluminescent blue color, which was also the direct result of the exposure to the immense nuclear radiation that swept LV-426 during the nuclear winter. What made it deadlier was its acidic blood, which had transformed into a substance quite similar to liquid nitrogen. This blood was also capable of causing extremely severe cryogenic burns, which could solidify your body parts immediately, making them brittle and causing them to shatter. Now, in case of the usual acidic blood, the damage, although serious, doesn't leave your body parts severed. So yeah, in my opinion, this version of the Xenomorph was way deadlier than your run-of-the-mill Xenos, but what do you think?